Thank you for choosing Cal ISO Corporation for your training needs. This short video clip is presented to introduce you to some basic information on the requirements of the Code of Federal Regulations Food and Drug Administration 21 CFR Part 111, Current Good Manufacturing Practices for the Manufacturing, Packaging, Labeling, or Holding of Dietary Supplements. 21 CFR Part 111 contains the regulations for the minimum current good manufacturing practices for preparation of dietary supplements for human consumption. This regulation contains 16 subparts with 84 unique requirements. The 11 sections listed here represent the requirements for written procedures specifically identified within 21 CFR Part 111. The 14 sections listed here represent the requirements for the record specifically identified within 21 CFR Part 111 that must be kept and maintained. Subpart A, General Provisions, contains three requirements which outline the prerequisites for who is subject to 21 CFR 111. It provides definitions of terms critical to Part 111 such as yield, batch, lot number, component, etc and also clearly states that you must comply with other applicable statutory provisions and regulations under the Act. Subpart B, Personnel, discusses the requirements for preventing microbial contamination, the need for hygienic practices such as wearing protective outer garments, maintaining adequate personal cleanliness, hand washing, etc., the need for qualified employees, and the additional qualification expectations for each supervisor. Subpart C, Physical Plant and Grounds, discusses the requirements for keeping the grounds in a condition that protects against contamination, maintaining the physical plant and repair sufficient to prevent contamination, using cleaning compounds and sanitizing agents that are free from microorganisms, and the need for a pest control program. Subpart D, Equipment and Utensils, outlines the requirements for using equipment and utensils that are of appropriate design, construction, and workmanship. All equipment and utensils must be installed and maintained to facilitate cleaning. Instruments and controls used in manufacturing or testing must be calibrated, and the equipment must be capable of operating satisfactorily within the operating limits required by the process. Subpart E, Establish a Production and Process Control System, discusses the requirements to implement a system of production and process controls that covers all stages of manufacturing, packaging, labeling, and holding of dietary supplements. The system must be designed to ensure the quality of the dietary supplement and labeled as specified and quality control operations must be implemented. Subpart E also outlines the requirements for establishing specifications, the ability to determine whether the established specifications have been met, and the monitoring of the in-process points, steps, or stages where control is necessary to ensure the quality of the finished batch. Subpart E also discusses what must be done if established specifications are not met what samples must be collected, the holding of reserved samples for each lot packaged and labeled, and who will be conducting material reviews and making disposition decisions. And finally, Subpart E concludes by limiting the ability to reprocess a rejected dietary supplement or provide an in-process adjustment to a component, packaging, or label to make it suitable for use in manufacture. Subpart F, Quality Control, requires that quality control personnel must ensure that the manufacturing, packaging, labeling, and holding operations ensure the quality of the dietary supplement and that the dietary supplement is packaged and labeled as specified in the master manufacturing record. Quality control personnel must perform operations that include approving or rejecting all processes, specifications, written procedures, etc. They are also responsible for reviewing and approving all laboratory control processes associated with the production and process control system. Subpart F continues on to require that quality control personnel must conduct a material review and make a disposition decision if an established specification is not met or a batch deviates from the master manufacturing record. They will also manage the calibration system and review all records for components, packaging, and labels. 
Subpart F also outlines the responsibility of quality control personnel to review and approve all master manufacturing records, batch production records, conduct material reviews, etc. They also must approve and release all quarantine materials as well as managing any return dietary supplements. And finally, subpart F discusses the quality control requirements for product complaints, which include reviewing and approving decisions about whether to investigate. Subpart G, Components, Packaging, and Labeling Control Systems, provides detailed requirements for visual examination of all components requiring the quarantine of components prior to use. Each unique lot must be identified, and that unique identifier must follow the component throughout the manufacturing process. In addition, you must clearly identify, hold, and control under a quarantine system for appropriate disposition any component, packaging, or label that is rejected or unsuitable for use. Subpart H, Master Manufacturing Record, discusses the details for following a written master manufacturing record for each unique formulation that is manufactured and for each batch size to ensure uniformity in the finished batch. Subpart I, Batch Production Record, lists the details for the information to be included in each batch production record, such as the batch or lot number, the identity of the equipment used, dates and times of maintenance and cleaning activities, unique identifiers assigned to each component, weight of each component, yield, monitoring results, test results, and documentation required. Subpart J, Laboratory Operations, discusses the need to use adequate laboratory facilities to perform testing, the need to establish and follow laboratory control procedures that are reviewed and approved, and the need to verify testing methodologies. Subpart K, Manufacturing Operations, provides the details necessary for designing or selecting manufacturing processes to ensure that product specifications are consistently met. All manufacturing operations are conducted in accordance with adequate sanitation principles, and all precautions must be taken to avoid contamination during the manufacturing process. Additionally, rejected dietary supplements must be clearly identified, held, and controlled under a quarantine system for appropriate disposition. Subpart L, Packaging and Labeling Operations, discusses the requirements for determining if packaging meets requirements, the issuance of all packaging and labeling must be controlled, unique identifiers assigned to each component must be maintained, and the packaging of product must be completed in such a way as to guarantee the quality of the product. Subpart L also outlines the requirements necessary for repackaging and relabeling product, which include quality control approval of the process, examination of a representative sample, and quality control approval of each reprocessed batch. Subpart M, Holding and Distributing, requires that all components, labeling, and packaging must be held under appropriate conditions such as temperature, humidity, light, and control so that the identity, purity, strength, and composition are not affected, labels and components are not mixed up, or deteriorated in any way. Subpart M continues on to require reserve samples be held in a similar fashion to finished product such that product integrity is maintained, the product is protected against contamination and is stored in the same container closure system as the original product. Subpart N, Return Dietary Supplements, discusses the need to identify and quarantine all returned product until quality control personnel review and disposition the material. Additionally, the product must be destroyed or otherwise suitably disposed of unless the outcome of a material review allows for salvage. Subpart N also requires that any reprocessed returned product meets all product specifications established and is approved by quality control personnel. Subpart O, Product Complaints, states a qualified person must review and investigate all product complaints, quality control must approve the findings, and all review and investigation must extend to all relevant batches and records. Subpart P, records and record keeping, specifically requires written records. Records must be maintained one year past the shelf life date, and the records must be kept as original records. This section also provides guidance on the documents that must be made available to the FDA upon request. 
We certainly hope that you found this video helpful. You can now proceed with the first slide of the online course.